Hey guys, it's the one and only Marie. And your boy Jay. Today you're acting to Venom versus Cronin. Mobile versus Soul Eater. Um, hmm, it's different this time. But, uh, yeah, let's get to it. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by AT&T 5G. We wanted to give a big shout out to AT&T for helping us throw a huge RTX this year. Without them, the show wouldn't have been possible. AT&T's 5G network is now available nationwide. Whether you're at home or on the go, you'll enjoy coverage in more places. Plus, AT&T doesn't make it complicated. 5G access is included in all best consumer limited plans at no extra cost. For more information on AT&T 5G, visit att.com forward slash 5G. It's always nice to have a best friend attached to your hip, like me and my shotgun leg. But these two take their friends even further than that. Venom, the lethal symbiote and Spider-Man's best frenemy. And Crona, the deadly demon sword from Soul Eater. Oh, no, He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Mm. <laughs> At the beginning of time, in the faraway reaches of space, the Clintar rose from a living darkness. One of these amorphous symbiotes was Venom. Who was a freaking loser? Hey, don't look at me, all the goop aliens were saying it. So they kicked the poor slime ball straight off the planet. In its exile, the symbiote underwent a number of misadventures which firmly shaped its personality. It bonded to a heroic Kree soldier rescuing refugees, a violent monster who committed genocide, and apparently Deadpool. Damn, no wonder Venom's so messed up in the head. Eventually, the symbiote was discovered by Peter Parker, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. It gave him a pretty slick black suit and awesome new powers. But after finding out it was a confused raging psychopathic alien, Pete decided to exercise it with the power of Christian Ruff. A wise decision, although ill-timed, as this event would cause the symbiote to finally meet its greatest partner, Edward Brock. And he was a journalist with the unluckiest backstory ever. While trying to uncover the identity of a serial killer, he blamed the wrong guy. The same day he published his article, Spidey caught the real killer, who lived right next door to the dude Eddie blamed. Long story short, Eddie was fired from his job, divorced by his wife, and disowned by his father. Who already blamed Eddie for his wife dying in childbirth? On top of all of that, Eddie learned he developed adrenal cancer with only a few months left to live. Man, and I thought 2020 was rough. I almost don't Yeah, I was going to die him for him. The wife, the, well, you know, well, disengaged or something like that. And then getting cancer, getting fired from his job from blaming somebody else that was a killer. That's tough. Blame him for becoming a supervillain. With all hope lost, he begged God to take it all away and got an answer. The symbiote. Just like Captain Planet, with their powers combined, these two losers became a super loser. Well, no, they actually became a horrifying monster with all of Spider-Man's powers and then some. Their mutual hatred of Spider-Man caused the symbiote to bond to Eddie like no host ever before. They were perfect, a terror in the night, an unstoppable demon. They were Venom. It even cured Eddie's cancer. Sort of. It's complicated. Apart from Spider-Man's webbing and web-crawling powers, Venom can use shape-shifting to mold his body into cool doodads. Swords, shields, tendrils, worm monster things, even wings. Yeah, imagine seeing this guy flying outside your window at night. Well, good luck sleeping ever again. Venom can camouflage his entire body heal severe wounds like impalement and lost limbs, mm. see all around him at once, and psychically project emotions onto others. Normally, this just makes people feel sorry for themselves, like Wiz on Tinder. But one time he convinced a bunch of other symbiotes that life was meaningless and they killed themselves. <laughs> and that's dark. If desperate, the symbiote can even invade the bodies of others and make them burst from inside out. Gross and awesome. But if he doesn't want to pop them like a fun balloon, he can just take over their body like a creepy puppet master. While attached to a victim, Venom can control them by fusing the symbiote to their nervous system, specifically the brainstem and frontal lobes. Fighting off this mind control is extremely difficult unless you have powers that can directly counter it, such as another symbiote. Oh, God! 
aliens, tentacles, and mind control? Are we sure this episode is rated E for everyone, or do we need to start blurring stuff? Uh, uh, don't worry, aside from being a horrible... Okay, for what Rob is watching in the background, but okay. I think I was in the actual Venom movie. But I, mean, I don't think I've seen that part. I think Venom. Yes, murder. Venom stories are completely I don't think I don't part. Right. Venom proved a dangerous thorn in Spider Man's oh, side and frequently okay. ruined his. I think it's on Disney Plus, right? Venom? I'll check it out. His life. Even taking a page out of my favorite book, The Most Dangerous Game, and hunting him on a private island. Yeah, he was the coolest rival ever. But over the years, things kind of calmed down a bit. They even teamed up every so often. See, even with so much anger, Eddie had a legitimate desire to protect others. As a teenager stealing his dad's car, he accidentally ran over and killed a child. Despite his desire to confess, his father forced him to plead innocent and rigged the jury. The guilt has weighed him down ever since. So while Venom does have a hunger for human brains, he'd rather eat the face off a criminal than an innocent person. Venom's as tough as they come. He survived oh, yes. Ghost Rider's pen and stare. He's strong enough to toss a tank hundreds of feet up and fast enough to take down Spidey 2099, who once got mule near while it was moving 2,000 times the speed of sound. Although Venom does not possess the spider sense that allows Parker to react in microseconds, he can still keep up with all the usual Spidey gallery. Plus, while symbiotes have a severe weakness to high-pitched sound and heat, he's developed resistances to them. Like when he took this giant explosion, or when he survived a sonic scream from some mutant gremlins that shattered all glass within 10 miles. While he may be tougher to take down than most other symbiotes, Venom never fully overcame his weaknesses. However, his symbiotic genes provide far more help than harm. This includes traits and memories from other hosts, like Scorpion and Flash Thompson. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Bullets are a genetic trait? How do I pass that down? Venom would certainly need a lot of firepower to survive an encounter with the symbiote god. Oh, jeez, here we go. At first, the Clintar symbiotes were seen as a peaceful people. But huh. turns out they were actually living weapons forged by the primordial deity Null in an attempt to conquer the universe. And I bet next up, Marvel decides wow. their magic maple syrup people from Asgardian Eye, huh? But okay, cosmic sludge made by alien Satan. Let's go with that. Despite it all, Eddie and the symbiote have proven they're far more than the dark legacy the Clintar were intended for. They've even gained the respect of the Avengers and eventually considered Spider-Man a friend. Sort of. It's complicated. Eddie really is the best pal Venom could have found. And let's be real, he just looks freaking badass. She has everywhere, even in your nightmares. <laughs> In ancient times, a demonic being known as the Kishin ravaged humanity. You know the funny thing is, I never knew the background about Venom till now. That he's from, a, I know he was from a different planet, I didn't know that was created like that. Nearly driving all mankind into the depths of madness. This monster could only be defeated and sealed away by the God of Death. So, uh, why is the literal God of Death so goofy looking? Have you ever seen Death Note? Hell, even Thanos' girlfriend is scarier than this clown. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with the world of Soul Eater, prepare yourself. It's different. Well, not one in the return of the apocalypse, death in his oven mitts found in a school, Death Academy. Here, warriors called Meisters would train to fight evil using the power of their souls. They even got neat demon weapons that doubled as people. Together, they learned courage, chivalry, unbreakable friendship. You know, all, all that anime crap. Krona Gorgon was not one of these students. Buckle up, it's all Gloomsville from here. Deal with it. I don't think I know how to deal with this situation. Throughout their childhood, Krona was abused by their mother, Medusa, a witch obsessed with the legendary Kishi. You can see where this is going. Anime Uma Thurman was such a fangirl, she figured, hey, why don't I make my own kitchen? So she used her child as a guinea pig in a bunch of crazy experiments. You know, it kind of sounds like something you do, Wiz. Don't, silly, I only use actual guinea pigs. Part of Medusa's great experiment included bonding Krona to a weapon, much like the Meisters of Death Academy. However, joining with Ragnarok was a bit more literal. Ragnarok used to be your run-of-the-mill transforming weapon person until Medusa melted him alive in black blood. Black blood being another experiment of hers. Krona's own blood is, in fact, the same black blood, which they can remotely control. 
It can be used to heal wounds and even harden as a sort of internal armor. Cooking rags and black blood turned him into a brand new weapon that was literally poured into Krona's bloodstream. From that point on, Krona and Ragnarok were two halves of the same person. The meek and tortured child firmly attached to their loud and brazen weapon. And Reggie has that black blood control too. They can yank poor Krona around like a puppet. They can use black blood to create wings, thorny vines, all kinds of weapons, and big ass needles. Ugh, I hate needles. What's up with that mouth when he transforms into a sword? That thing's messed up. Like the Meisters, Krona can wield their own soul in combat. Amplified by Ragnarok has a technique called Scream Resonance. Think of it like hooking an electric guitar up to an amp. Though more akin to a screeching banshee on LSD. I didn't know you played! I don't. <laughs> it's incredibly powerful, causing internal damage to foes and making Ragnarok vibrate to increase his cutting power. Hey, are you okay? What? With this weapon at their side, Krona set out on a quest That's to become a Tishi, which required quite a lot of homicide. Yeah, Ragnarok can absorb the souls of dead people, and supposedly enough souls will turn Krona into the Kishin. So they went around slaughtering hundreds of people. Despite their name, Death Academy wasn't exactly a fan particularly their star student, Maka Alper. Don't worry, she and Krona ended up becoming good friends. Until they were sort of... it's complicated. As a pawn in Medusa's mission, Krona gained several levels of new potential. Notably, after gaining or absorbing the powers of the monstrous Black Cloud, the demon tool Brew, and even Ashura, the original Kishi. All of which increased Krona's abilities, especially the Black Blood. Now Krona can turn their entire body into goop, and the slightest touch could inflict madness. That's madness with a capital M, by the way. This madness is a corruptive effect that causes targeted variants of delusion or obsession, often spread as a wavelength. The wavelength of Krona's mad blood specifically causes violent psychosis. Krona may be a bone, but they're a badass. They can cut through a whole ghost ship. Cover the moon with sound waves? Open the moon's mouth? What the hell is wrong with that moon? Krona and Ragnarok have held their own against multiple Death Academy students, including Maka, Death the Kid, and Black Star. Sometimes all at once! Kid once flew from Nevada to Egypt in less than a minute, and Black Star is even faster. He's dodged lasers and been tracked moving over 20 kilometers in 6 microseconds while approaching Baba Yaga Castle. And Krona's been able to make enough mad blood to crush a whole goddamn Ukrainian city! While this city isn't named, we can use a similar metropolitan area in Ukraine, Kiev, for instance. With this in mind, Krona must have created over 9 trillion tons of black blood. Enough to fill over 6 billion Olympic swimming pools. But Krona's a big leap from Invincible. They've had their shit kicked in plenty of times, and their hardened black blood can only block so much. Even then, Medusa's plan ultimately succeeded. After years of scheming, Krona absorbed the power of Ashura and became a Kishi. Well, more like Kishi absorbed Krona, but close enough. But with the power of friendship, Krona ironically wound up defeating the Kishi once and for all. Despite their life being nothing but destruction, Krona was the one who ultimately saved the world. With an oh. added side effect of a new madness wavelength that made everyone obsessed with boobs. Truly a positive effect on people everywhere. Just give up. I'm tired of trying to figure out how to deal with you. Alright, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. But first, instead of chewing on brains and souls, how about chewing on blue? Thanks again to Blue Chew for sponsoring this episode. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Hello? Uh, I don't want to be alone. Hey, pay attention, you oh. turd! Oh, lucky day! Two brains for the price of one! I don't think I can handle this right now. Your mind is ours. <laughs> 
tricky opponent. His shape-shifting camouflage and multitude of weapons kept Krona on guard. Unfortunately, Venom lacked the power needed to keep up a prolonged fight. Yeah, Krona matching Black Star's speed makes for a pretty clear difference. Krona could reach Mach 9000, while Venom only topped out around Mach 2000. And while Venom has shown incredible physical strength that puts Spider-Man to shame, he could never compete with 9 trillion tons of mad blood. Which, by the way, that precise control of the black blood totally meant Krona could push out any of Venom's attempt at being a puppeteer. And Krona's shown even greater feats of strength as well. Assuming all the moon's teeth are similar in size and stone, opening this jaw is equivalent to lifting over 10,000 tons. Of course, the final nail in Eddie's coffin was the fact that half of Krona's arsenal was sound-based, basically Venom's kryptonite. Somewhat. Recall that Venom did gain a notable resistance to sound attacks, so we needed to determine if Krona's sonic waves were great enough to effectively harm him. You know those gremlins who shattered every window in 10 miles with a screech attack? The symbiote barely survived it, so that's a good high end to look at. It takes at least 100 decibels to shatter glass normally. To cover that much distance, the combined sonic blast must have equaled about 244 decibels. In contrast, in order to engulf the moon, Krona's sonic waves must have reached over 275 decibels. And yes, that's considering the weird size and shape of the moon. Ugh, just look at that freaky thing. Sure, 275 doesn't seem that much more than 244, but decibels increase on a logarithmic rate. This means Krona's sound attack was actually over a thousand times stronger. Vinny for sure wasn't surviving that. Eddie and the symbiote held their own with versatility, 
but Chroma and Ragnarok have the beat in destructive power, blistering speed, and an arsenal that can take advantage of Venom's key weakness. Looks like Venom just got Ragnarok. The winner is Chroma. Thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. Come back next week to see previews of our upcoming matchups. If you want to watch more stuff, you can click the boxes right around here, and you can always pick up some DB merch at store.roosterteeth.com. Please put it in the comment down below. Make sure you like and subscribe to those. Post notifications. Ding, 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 ding. And we out.